I personally know a lot of people who have several fragrances in their quote unquote collection, but they mainly save them for special occasions. Now you might be one of those people where you don't wear fragrance on a daily basis, but what I can say is that the 10 fragrances in this list can be worn for a formal occasion flawlessly. You can dress all of these fragrances up. They all convey the sort of dressed up and even perhaps a professional vibe. I'm excited to get on with this list, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I tell you about these 10 designer fragrances that can be dressed up effortlessly, they all kind of give a formal vibe to me and you can use them when you're seeking to give off a professional aura. I want to start the video off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel and that happens to be on a daily basis. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you took something of value from today's episode, it would really mean a lot to me. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into this list. Of course, when it comes to professional smelling fragrances, sometimes they can be on the spicy side of things, the woodsy side of things, and perhaps even on the sweet side of things. But definitely these are not casual, everyday, sort of run of the mill, running errands types of fragrances. A lot of the casual fragrances that I do have in my collection tend to be aquatic or citrusy or just very laid back, uncomplicated. These have a bit of an edge to them. So I definitely want to start things off with the first formal fragrance and you can't make a formal list without including this fragrance. It's none other than Blue de Chanel by Chanel. I don't need to tell you much about this fragrance. Everybody knows Blue de Chanel. It's a workhorse, dressed up, clean, friendly, professional, extroverted in a sense. You have the grapefruit, the incense. It's a beautiful scent. Of course, we also have Bulgari's Man in Black. Now the original Bulgari Man, it's a little peppery. It's a little woodsy. It has a bit of a dry feel to it. No amber to speak of. It doesn't convey a sweetness in any way. This one is actually quite different. I think it's becoming a little bit harder to find, but this one is like a mature version of Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf. I love this fragrance for that reason. It just comes across smelling a little bit on the mysterious yet also flirtatious side of things. So if you're looking for something that's on the bit of a professional side of things, but you also crave a bit of sweetness in there, Bulgari's Man in Black is a fantastic choice for that. We also have another fragrance which is kind of becoming a Swiss army knife at this point by Mont Blanc. It's called Explorer. Now, of course, Explorer gets compared to Creed's Aventus, the pineapple, the apple, the black, Current, the birch tar, the vanilla in the base. Very professional. It's a fruity Shebra kind of a fragrance. It also has a really, really, really high compliment factor. So if you're looking for compliments, you want people to notice you and you want people to tell you how good they think you smell, Mont Blanc's Explorer. It's the perfect fragrance for them. Now, we're actually gonna veer over to something that could come across a little casual, but I have experimented with wearing this one to work, and I actually wear a suit and tie to work pretty much on a daily basis. I don't even dress down on Fridays. I like to keep it professional at all times. I've worn this one a lot, and it has worked so well on me. This one is the most recent Dior Homme Sport. Now, a lot of citrus, and for me, citrus always gives off a bit of a refined vibe. This one has no oceanic components to Speak of, but it also has this really spicy, tangy ginger note about it. And I think it's the presence of that ginger with the citrus that conveys that sort of clean, professional, spicy aroma that I really, really enjoy. So I will admit, this is one that can kind of be worn interchangeably between casual scenarios and formal scenarios, but I will admit it does really well for both. The next one I want to talk about is definitely a formal occasion type of a fragrance. I would say the original can also be pulled off in a formal scenario scenario as well. This one has this sweet, creamy, buttery iris with this sort of saccharin undertone that I personally love. And this one is Givenchy's Gentleman Reserve Privé. Look, if you are a fan of fragrances like Dior Homme Intense by Christian Dior and you want a creamier iris, a more buttery iris, you have to check this fragrance out. Phenomenal release, one of the best releases of the year in which it was released. I can't, you know, sing enough high praise about it. It's really an amazing fragrance. Now, if you 
do like fragrances that are a little bit on the sweeter side of things. You want something that is a little bit on the spicy side of things as well. Definitely check this out. It has amber wood. It has a toffee note or a cord in the heart, but it also has cardamom in the opening. And this one by Atsado is the most wanted Eau de Parfum Intense. I know there's a parfum version, there's wanted, there's the most wanted. There's so many different flankers. So kind of had to look at the bottom to remind myself of the full title of this one. But cardamom, toffee, amberwood, boom. That's what you get from this one. It does kind of remind me, especially because of that toffee cardamom combination, it reminds me a little bit of Changing Constance by Penhaligans. So if you like that fragrance, you want something a little bit on the masculine side of things, check this one out. And then of course, we also have another one that I don't personally love. I do love the eau, the Parfum version or the Eau de Parfum, I should say. This one is actually the Eau de Parfum. The original Eau de Toilette K by Dolce & Gabbana is not a favorite of mine. Although that fragrance does give off this sort of strong juniper berry vibe that does come across smelling very professional. Reminds me a bit of Perry Alice 360 for men. Now the Eau de Parfum version is the one that I actually do like. This one is a bit warmer, a bit spicier. At times it even kind of reminds me of like a designer version of Straight to Heaven by Killian Paris. That's one of the reasons why I enjoy this one so much. But K, either the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum both make for really good professional fragrances. It's just that my personal preference preference is catered more towards the Eau de Parfum. Of course, we have this next fragrance and it seems like the stronger the concentration got, the more formal and professional it got. <laughs> the Eau de Toilette is very casual. Of course, I am talking about Dior Sauvage. The one that I have here is the Parfum version. Look, if you want to take it all the way, you can go ahead and opt for the Elixir version. That one is definitely the most spicy iteration of the bunch. If you like spicy fragrances at 100% absolutely. If you want a bit of that citrusy freshness that can also be found in the Eau de Toilette of Dior Sauvage, but you're just looking for a bit more umph to it, a bit more amber and vanilla, some sweeter, spicier tones, but you don't wanna go full spice with Sauvage Elixir, try the Parfum version of Dior Sauvage. Of course, we have a competitor to Dior Sauvage, but this one doesn't have that metallic vibe that is often associated with the Eau de Toilette, the original. This one is Versace Dylan Blue. It has the pepper, it has the ambroxan, it has the citrus. So very clean, professional. The only thing is that when you let this one dry down, it does get a bit green. So a bit green, a bit earthy, without that metallic vibe. So I personally know of a lot of people who prefer Versace Dylan Blue to Dior Sauvage for that reason. And with that being said, we want to go over to the number one fragrance on this list. This one is 100% professional definitely a bit on the daring side of things. I can't think of a scenario where I would find myself wearing this one casually. Definitely conveys a dressed up formal vibe and I just think there's something really special about the smell. It just does things so differently. It's not your run-of-the-mill fragrance. It's unconventional in a sense and it's from a high-end designer that has the reputation to back up uh, the brand's releases and this one is of course none other and this is the original. This is Tom Ford's Ombre Leather in the Signature Collection. Guys, that saffron, the spiciness of the leather, the way it comes across is just so elegant smelling, so rich and professional. And of course, it's not for everybody. A lot of people really don't like that whole Tuscan leather, ombre leather DNA. Some people find it to be a bit too harsh. I've even heard people say it smells like an ashtray or anything. I don't personally get that connection. I've smoked cigarettes in the past. I've been around many people who smoke. Doesn't remind me of an ashtray. It's a beautiful scent and I think it has something really special going for it. And it's just not the type of fragrance I would see myself wearing casually. Something like Costa Azura, beautiful fragrance to wear casually. This one, on the other hand, formal, formal, formal. Here we have 10 designer fragrances that you can dress up. Hey, let me know. What are some fragrances on the designer side of things that you enjoy dressing up? Leave your comments down below. Always love the interaction. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, please don't forget to support the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell and give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow.